How good is Duraludon's evolved form? Today I want to discuss that and also go over movesets for this Pokemon, and I think the first thing to look at is where its strengths and where its weaknesses. In terms of physical bulk and special attack, it's in a pretty good spot, especially when you factor in that good HP. It has enough speed to outspeed Pokemon like Iron Hands, so if you put Iron Hands down at low health, you aren't afraid of being drain punched, which is really, really nice. But its special bulk is really lackluster, and it does make room for Pokemon like Fluttermane to just do a lot of damage, or even a resisted Bleak Windstorm from common Tornadoes should be doing a bit more than you expect. So what seems to be the ideal item for this Pokemon is a Salt Vest. A Salt Vest allows you to patch up that special defense without having to invest too many EVs, and this allows you to put more EVs into physical, uh, more EVs into special attack. In terms of this Pokemon's ability, you get Stamina, Sturdy, and Stalwart. Now, I think Stalwart is okay, but I don't think it's going to be as useful, and you can probably come up with better game plans into a common redirection Pokemon, especially since strategies like Indeedy Armors are so linear, you can probably just have better game plans rather than just having to redirect and kind of guess their trash stylization. I think it worked better in a Dynamax form where you can actually reliably knock out Pokemon like Hatterene, but now you can't do that because those kind of Pokemon can just tear in front of you. So I think Stamina is definitely the best ability because you can switch this thing in on weak physical attacks start getting the defense boost and you can make yourself really hard to remove on the physical end like after one stamina boost it's really difficult to knock knock this pokemon out and i think it could create room for this pokemon to live like something like urshifu close combat as well maybe later on in the game if you've taken like 20 percent from something so those are kind of my uh, general uh, takeaways on this pokemon in terms of moves it does actually get electro shot Essentially what Electroshock does is that it's kind of like Meteor Beam where it takes two turns but you get a special attack boost. The only difference is that in if you're in rain, the attack goes off immediately. So I think the ideal way to play this Pokemon is definitely play it on rain. The only issue is that unlike something like Raging Bolt which can fit onto a lot of different teams, this Pokemon doesn't really fit onto that many teams. I think you really have to play it in rain. Because even if you're playing Assault Vest, like unless you tear into something like Poison which isn't super ideal just because you're still having the ground typing, you're still taking way too much damage from Terra Fairy Moonblast from Fluttermane. And I think because of that, it's not really able to like stick on the field for as long as it wants to. Like even versus Pokemon like Earth Power Heatran, and I think that all creates issue for the Pokemon. So I think if you want to get the maximum value out of this, you definitely want to play it in Rain. So we're going to create a moveset that I think really functions well on Rain, and then we're going to try to create something around Rain that could be good for this Pokemon. I also want to discuss something about this Pokemon like on Rain teams that might create an option where you might want to use another Steel types, because there is another Steel type that's really good on Rain, and you kind of have to pick and choose on which one you want. I think both of them are really good good but you have to uh there is definitely a drawbacks to i think there's more drawbacks to a duraludon's evolved form so essentially you want to be running electro shot i think that's really important and then the next moves there's a ton of options so first of all you have heavy slam because this Pokemon doesn't really have that much speed naturally, you could actually go minus speed nature, and then Heavy Slam is really good at knocking out Pokemon like Fluttermane. After that, you could actually forego the Dragon coverage, and or like the Dragon Stab, and you could just go for two random special coverage moves. This can really depend on the team you have and like what you actually want to hit. But the only issue is that you don't really get that many different moves. So you might as well, uh, so you probably want to go for Dragon Pulse at that point, or even Draco Meteor. I think Draco Meteor is pretty nice. And then in the last slot, again, it really just depends on what your team in particular needs. I think Snarl is really nice if you want to do a bit better into Ndidi Armouge. It also still ha helps patch up your special bulk a little bit, little bit, because now it's really difficult for Fluttermane to swap in on either slot, because they have to be worried about Snarl. I think Aura Sphere is pretty cool, just to hit a few specific specific things, but, and I also think Dark Pulse is really nice if you want to hit Golingo, which is the Pokemon we're actually going to compare it to. It also, funny, funnily enough, gets Meteor Beam. I'm going to put Snarl on here. I think Snarl is pretty nice. And then I will actually drop the uh, Heavy Slam for Flash Cannon. The reason being is that, like, although you can't one-shot Fluttermane, like, I think the special attack boost into spamming Flash Cannons is one of the strongest things with this Pokemon, and it doesn't really have any other moves to actually abuse that. Like, you might, like, Electro Shot and Flash Cannon are the only two, so you might as well have that. Now, in terms of EV spread, I would actually optimize for Grassy Train Recovery, and then I would actually invest a little bit into Special Defense. The thing is, this thing's Special Bulk is pretty lackluster, so you do want to invest at least some EV so you're making the most of your Salt Vest, because I think 188 is still fine in terms of your damage output, especially if you are getting boosts. 
I honestly think you could even drop down a bit more. So actually, I think you definitely do need that. So maybe we go for this. So at least like when you multiply that by two, it's still going to be pretty high. And then you could go up to around here. Now you're funny, funny enough, your physical bulk is still better than your special bulk, but at least both of your bulks are actually pretty good. I guess some, yeah, this, this definitely seems to be an okay spread. And then you really want to take things like, um, you want to be able to take hits from like Urshifu Rapid Strike going for a close combat. I think that one's really important. Like your fighting weakness is essentially important to cover for. So like poison would make sense. The only issue is that you, do, you don't really want to take on Lander's Stomping Tantrum. So I would personally consider Terra Grass. I think this is generally okay just because you get a lot of neutralities and also you can sit in front of a Moongus and spam Electro Shot. Or you can go for Terra Ghost. Terra Ghost is really good in terms of uh, just uh, being immune to Fake Out. And then you are able to get off more attacks in those kind of situations. So yeah, those are kind of the Terras I recommend. I think as the format develops, we'll probably figure out more Terrestrializations, but this is like my general take. Then uh, the next set that I was thinking about for this Pokemon was a uh, Choice Scarf. Uh, the reason I was thinking about Choice Scarf is that with this much speed, uh, so you do actually have to go with a Timid Nature, unfortunately, but yeah, you could go up to like 138. Uh, yeah, you go to 138 and then you go max special attack. I guess we can get a, just a tiny bit more bulk out just to have like an even number there. And then, yeah, essentially you're going to play this on Rain again. Just go for like spamming Electro Shots across the board. You can kind of use it as like an endgame sweeper pretty effectively. Scarf Draco Meteor does a lot of damage. And then I would honestly just run something like Steel Beam and Flash Cannon. If you're again in one of those endgames where you just need a little bit of extra power from Steel Beam, like compared to like Draco Meteor, you can definitely get that going. Or, or you just want that little bit more accuracy, but also the stronger moves, so. So, yeah, I think it's a pretty nice alternative. The other move that you can run on the Assault Vest set, by the way, is actually Body Press. I did see some of them doing this. Essentially, because of Body Press, you're getting so much you're getting so much extra of physical defense that Body Press is really good if your opponents just start spamming Snarl into you. And I have actually seen a lot of them up for Body Press. It's kind of like what people did with Max Steel Spike Dialga with like Assault Vest back in the Series 8. It's kind of similar, but you just you're playing towards stamina. And I did realize that stamina actually activates a lot lot more often than it seems like body press could actually be something that could realistically just like do super super well in an end game like if you get two boosts that like that body press is at 130 like it's not 130 300 like stats so you're actually doing crazy damage with body press and i think those are definitely ways to play it now one way another way to play is actually on tailwind so if you're on Tailwind, you're not really worried about your bulk, because at that point, you're kind of just like, I'm just going to do as much damage as possible. So because of that, you can play like Raindance Tornadus, and then again, probably go for Electro Shot. The issue with like not having, the, the issue with using like this Pokemon, like, on Tailwind is that it still competes for Golden Go, and I think because of that, you want to create the niche where if you just go for Rain Dance Electro Shot, you're gonna one shot Tornadus a lot of the time. I think that's like the really really important uh, niche to actually create because if you're not if you're not creating that, then you probably just want to use Golden Go anyways, and it doesn't actually end up creating the most value. So you probably go for that. I would. Uh, oh my, I'm not changing background to that. I like my background. <laughs> okay. But yeah, then you'd probably go with like Flash Cannon, so this is able to uh, do a ton of damage to Fluttermane. Now, I do think that some Fluttermane still live modest max special attack, uh, <laughs> what is it called? Uh, Flash Cannon, which is kind of unfortunate, but you kind of just have to accept that sometimes. And then, yeah, so you have the 105 here. A 105 seems to be fine, like in Tailwind, you're going to outspeed what you need to anyways. And then you just play towards Protect, and I guess is there any good spread move that this Pokemon gets? Like in terms of, uh, I'm actually kind of curious. Oh, uh, let's see. It honestly doesn't get anything that I think is super like even something like Life Orb Snarl, like it's not it's not that worth. Like you wanna you wanna if you're playing under Tailwind, you might as well just play for like the strongest sweeping potential. So yeah, at that point you'd probably just play honestly, I don't even think there's any like super good move. Yeah, I guess I guess you'd have to go Draco Meteor at that point. Yeah, so you'd probably just end up playing these three moves under Tailwind. On this one, I particularly would go Terra Ghost, because you have the bulk to take Sucker Punch from uh, D Knight. And uh, not D Knight, a uh, Chen Pao. So you can just tear a ghost in front of D Knight Pao and actually be able to function properly. Because that physical bulk is really high and might as well like take advantage of it. So yeah, I think on Tailwind the Electro Shot set can be okay. It's only because you're actually able to pressure Tornadus, which Golden Go isn't particularly able to do. So yeah, those are kind of like three sets. I want to see if there's any like cool support set we can come up with. Because I did actually see some nice support moves on this Pokemon. Uh, does it get Helping Hand, first of all? It does not get Helping Hand, but I think we can just go to like status and uh, let's, let's go category. Let's go status. Okay, so Hone Claws is not that useful. Iron Defense Body Press. Hold up. 
like and the thing is you could try to play this with like beat up whimsicott but i think that's such a hold hmm i will try to come up with a beat up whimsicott set that works with the assault vest body press because i think that one doesn't seem like as big of a gimmick because like you want it to actually be consistent in terms of like tournament play but yeah sword stance is not that useful uh this thing t wave's not that useful like, yes, critical hit ra raising is, like, pretty nice, but at the end of the day, I don't really think it makes that big of a difference, so... Yeah, actually, I would consider Iron Defense Body Press. So the reason I'm considering Iron Defense Body Press is that you're naturally resistant to Surging Strikes. Your physical defense is so good. So if you're able to sweep through with Iron Defense Body Press, I think that can actually be pretty nice. Now, would you rather use this or Como? The one advantage of using this over Como is that this Pokemon actually, like, it should be able to tank a hit from Fluttermane and then eventually be able, like, with this much bulk, you should be able to take the hit and you could just play something like this. So then at that point, you're not playing Bold, you're probably playing Impish, and yeah, at plus two, you're already having insane uh, physical defense. Your special defense is already really good now, or it's not really good, but it's enough to take the hits that you need to because you're investing 252 two EVs. So then at that point, would you just go for defensive Terra on like something like Poison? Because then you're not taking too much from Stomping Tantrum anyways, so like there's that, but also you still lose to Lando Eye. So, like, I think no matter what you tear this thing into, there will always be, like, bad matchups. So, you kind of just have to pick the one that's, like, relatively most neutral. But I do think this is actually a pretty good set. Because, like, you can just, like, use the Iron Defense Body Press and the Stamina. And you can pair this with, like, Special Damage Reduction, like, Snarl. And I think because of Stamina, the Iron Defense Body Press set becomes a lot more threatening. Now, if you're play I wouldn't play this with beat up strategy because, and the reason is, is that you're already getting the setup anyways with Iron Defense, so there's no need to accelerate that with uh, beat up when, like, plus two body press is already just chunking everything. Now, I want to team build around the Assault Vest set. The reason I want to team build around the Assault Vest set is, is uh, so this is a set, like, similar Assault Vest set to the Raging Bolt video earlier today, but I want to try with a different partner. So, at least what I thought about Whimsicott, and I actually played against Whimsicott Ape on Ladder, and I got completely destroyed. Like, it was, uh, it actually felt really strong. So, the thing about Whimsicott is that it has access to Beat Up, but it also has access to Tailwind. So, do you play Whimsicott Archelodon and then Pelipper? So, the reason for Pelipper is that then you end up getting the, uh, you know, the boost on Electro Shot. The only thing is that, do you actually need that, like, that boost? Like, do you want, do you actually need to play, uh, this move? Because you could just go for something like Thunderbolt, or I was even thinking of going something like Snarl. So the reason I was thinking about going something like Snarl instead of Electro Shot is that you're not actually playing in rain with this kind of core. You're playing outside of rain, and you're also using the Snarl as a way of helping versus Ndidi Armors. So then at that point, you'd probably go for something like Moonblast, and then I would just go for something like Protect. You can't even drop Protect for something like Helping Hand, and then run like Covert Cloak. I think Covert Cloak's pretty nice because, like, this Pokemon doesn't have Protect anyways, so you might as well just have two poke. Like, you might as well just guarantee the beat up or Tailwind a lot of the time. So now you have Helping Hand plus, like, Draco Meteor, and then the next turn you can follow up with beat up into Body Press, and I think the offensive potential you get out of all that is actually really good. Because then you can play with something like Annihilate. And I was thinking about playing, like, standard, you know, bulk up Annihilate, but then you go for, um, I think you definitely have to play towards Defiant, like Defiant's definitely the better ability. And then you would just go for a standard defensive turn, something like Water, so you're able to take on Surging Strikes. I think taking on Surging Strikes is really important, and definitely a situation that would like come up a bunch. But yeah, that's kind of the- the other thing you can do is actually drop Flash Cannon for Heavy Slam, by the way. Like, Heavy Slam one-shots Fluttermane, so there's like that aspect to it. I think it really just depends on what you want your set to do. So then you go for, you know, Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Protect, and Rage Fist. Uh, let's see. I guess we could just figure out uh, partners. So we want something with Fake Out, and we want something with Fake Out that kind of helps the Annihilate get going, or we want some sort of really good redirection. I think those are kind of like the two ideal Pokemon, so definitely some sort of Ogre Pond. Yeah, the reason I'm thinking about Ogre Pond is that Ogre Pond are physical attackers, which really supplement, you know, our Childon being a, a special uh, being a special attacker, but also Defiant really supports these Pokemon. So I'm thinking of going for... Um, uh, Heart Flame. Heart Flame has the best matchup into Fluttermane out of like all of them, and I think because of that, it pairs really well with Annihilate. So then we'd probably just play towards like you know, Follow Me, Ivy Cudgel, Spiky Shield, and we'll figure out what the what the last move is. For now, I have Woodhammer because like thing is in Tailwind, you can just terrify our Ivy Cudgel. So now you're actually creating something that has a ton of offensive potential. Now in the next slot, I want Intimidate. I think Intimidate's really good, but I don't think Incineroar is going to be that good for this team. The other thing is that Annihilate is literally the best Incineroar counter. 
which really benefits Ogre Pond as well, because Ogre Pond doesn't hit Ensign. So I think this core is actually really nice, but you really need something with Intimidate to kind of tie the core together, because otherwise the core is not going to work. So maybe you go for something like Salamence plus uh, Pelipper? That can be something that's pretty good. It did top cut a regional championship a bit earlier. Now, I honestly don't, I don't think that's going to be as good for this team. So I'm going to consider going with Scarf Landers. The reason for Scarf Landers is that in the Tailwind Mirror, you can just start spamming Terra Blast. Defensively, you can like self U-turn to get that uh, like body press going, which I think is really nice. And yeah, there's just a lot of options. Like we see self U-turn in front of double protects on opponents end a lot of the time anyways. So might as well just have, have like another way to get extra value out of it. So we're going to consider putting on Scarf Landers. Now I want some good special attacker, and I want I just want a Pokemon that's really like very good stats, essentially. I think that's like the goal of the last Pokemon. So then you have a lot of offensive pressure and you're not just forced towards setup. Because like Whimsicott Ogre Pond's really good, but I want Landers plus something else in the back. And I want that something else to be able to actually lead with uh Whimsicott and just immediately like tailwind and do a ton of damage. So I want something essentially that's kind of like a specs golden go. Now, I think the biggest one, at least that I'm getting out of this, also my Discord's going off. Uh, let's see, I will uh, pause. Actually, I think I can do this. Does this work? Do If I turn off volume, does my... Hopefully not a Discord notification goes off. Okay. Yeah, either way. Um, yeah, so we're going to go with uh, Terra Fairy here. Uh, choice spec stuff. Actually, I don't think that's ideal here. We're going to go Booster Energy. Yeah, on the Tailwind teams, you want to run Booster Energy just because changing up your moves and having Protect is really useful because a lot of the Tailwind Pokemon just don't run Protect. But here, if you have Spiky Shield to Protect and uh, another Protect, then you actually give your Tailwind team a lot more consistency. So then I think that's pretty nice. And then in front of Fake Out, I'm just going to keep Rocky Helmet. I think Rocky Helmet and then just opting to Terra Ghost, if you want a Terra Ghost Tailwind, I think is actually a bit more useful. So... Yeah, we're going to opt towards that, and maybe this Terra ends up changing to something like Fairy a bit later on. Fairy's pretty good into fighting type, so I'm actually going to keep it at that, but yeah, this is the uh, general six. Let's see if we can uh, come up with some uh, spreads. So Whimsicott, like, you wanted to outspeed opposing, um, what is it called? You wanted to outspeed opposing Tornadus, but I don't actually think that's that that important. So, like, you want to go Timid Nature, I think that's, like, pretty much required, but let's see. I think, like, okay, 180 would pretty much guarantee all the Tornadus, because they end up hitting 179. So I guess we can just do that, and then we can just go, like, max HP, and then kind of just split the bulk evenly. Yeah, and I'm just going to put the rest into a special offense, since the stat is lower than the uh, physical defense. So, like, this should be able to take the hits. Uh, Annihilate. I really like Jolly Annihilate, by the way. The reason I like Jolly Annihilate is that, like, into, uh, essentially with Rage Fist, you're already doing, like, substantial damage to everything. So like you might as well just capitalize on um uh, you might as well just capitalize on your speed and actually get off your hits first. Cause like if you're doing 160% damage to something and you change that to like 120, you're still knocking everything out. Now the 160 is probably going down to like 140, like obviously not down that much, but at the end of the day, you're still picking up your knockouts. So you might as well essentially prioritize speed. That's kind of just my take on it. Uh, I put Woodhammer over uh, Hornleech because Woodhammer is able to knock out Urshifu, whereas Hornleech doesn't. So that was kind of the logic behind it. Then Ogre Pond, I do think bulky Ogre Pond is really important, but I also think doing damage is really important. So I'm just going to do a hybrid where you go with like 100 Adamant, a little bit above that jump number, and then kind of just go with almost max HP. Uh, this also is that one, you outspeed the 149 benchmark, which is Adamant Urshifu, which I think is really important. Because like Jolly Urshifu doesn't do as much damage, and like you can kind of probably take the hit anyways and just go for Wood Hammer. Now Scarf Landers. Because this is on Tailwind, I'm just going to go with the Scarf Landers that I played at the uh, MSS a bit earlier. It was just super bulky Scarf Landers. Uh, the reason for bulk is that, like, you're, you have your own Tailwind support, so you might as well just run a super bulky one and actually allow yourself to cycle around over and over. And if you need to outspeed other Scarf Pokemon, like, you can just Helping Hand into, like, get a ton of damage off with Fluttermane, and I think that's a pretty good option. The other conclusion that I'm coming to here is that, like, although, um, what is it called? I'm actually considering a different move. Like, Helping Hand is really good. Of course, like, you know, with, like, Fluttermane, with Ogre Pond. Actually, yeah. Because Helping Hand is so broken with, like, Fluttermane, Ogre Pond kind of stuff, I'm actually going to keep it. Then, in terms of Fluttermane, we're probably going to hit that 170 benchmark for Lando I. I think that's, like, a really acceptable one to hit. And then I'm going to try to live uh, 
Choice Scarf for Urshifu Surging Strikes. I think that's like the biggest one right now. So yeah, we can do that and then just get like an extra point. Uh, this is relatively straightforward Fluttermain spread, but it lives everything it needs to. It has some insane special bulk. And when you factor in Intimidate, it really it is able to stick on the field for a while, especially just like consistently protecting. So yeah, this is kind of a team that would take advantage of like the beat up into, uh, you know, like our Cholodon strategy where you go for like really powerful body presses. But also you can just play Redirection, use this as a defensive piece with like Snarl and Intimidate support. And then you can kind of use that to set up the Annihilate, but also you have beat up into Annihilate. And then you also have the immediate fast modes with Whimsicott, Ogre Pond, Landers, and Fluttermane. So you can actually really have a lot of flexibility. And I think when you're using strategies like beat up, you want to make sure that you have a lot of consistent modes and that you're not really just playing fully into the gimmick. Like you don't just want to play like, I guess like other beat up Pokemon here. Like you want something consistent that gives you a consistent mode with all these in. Yeah, that was kind of the goal of like building this. Uh, this was really exciting to build. I don't know how good th this Pokemon exactly will be. I do think it works on Rain with like a Moon. Gus Pelipper and all that. It's just that on those teams, you might as well be running Golden Go because the Nasty Plot stuff and Spore immunity just gives you so much more value than like the plus one from Electro Shot. That's kind of just my take on it. Like I would personally play Golden Go, like not on this team. I think this one definitely wants a beat up, which is why I made this kind of team. But yeah, I do think some of the uh, like rain, other rain teams would really want Golden Go. So yeah, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, I don't know how good this Pokemon will be or if it'll even get some good tournament usage, but I really hope so because I think the Pokemon is really cool. But um, yeah, I'm going to end the video there. Hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.